I'm going to show you how I restored and rebuilt a Starliner mount. I like the Starliner mount. I've had one for over 50 years, and when this one became available, I jumped at it. It didn't have any kind of pier or legs, so I made the pier and the legs and put the tires on. It had no counterweight, so I made counterweights. It had no setting circles worth anything, so I made new setting circles. And right now I have my uh, six inch uh, refractor on here. And I'll probably also take the refractor off and put a uh, 10 inch cast of grain on. So I'm going to go over what I did. In addition, I redid one of the bearings in the right ascension axis. And I also worked on the electronics including the uh, Hurst uh, drive motor for the clock drive. The old Starliner mount that came in that uh, box that's sitting on the uh, front end uh, loader on the uh, backhoe. So when I got uh, the uh, Starliner mount from Arizona, the first thing I did was I took it apart. And I found that the uh, right ascension axis, the shaft on the right, for the right ascension axis was uh, corroded, so I polished it up. I also polished up uh, the axis uh, on the declination axis. And uh, there are ball bearings on the right ascension axis, and one of the bearings was bad. So one of the nervous moments I had was removing the old bearing and pressing in a new one and the concern there was this housing for the bearing is made of aluminum and I was worried about it cracking but everything worked out fine this is the housing that holds the declination axis here's the top that goes on the uh, pier and again this scope this mount did not come with either a uh, pier or, or legs for the pier. I'm going to be working uh, something out for that. And uh, I'll show you later that this uh, Starliner mount has a really nice altitude azimuth capability and that's because there's a really nice set of bearings uh, for, for this part which uh, holds the right ascension component. Uh, here's uh, the housing for the clock drive. Here's the main gear on the clock drive axis and some of the other gears that are powered by a, a little Hearst motor. And uh, this is the gear on the uh, declination axis and this is the slow motion drive for this gear on the declination axis. And uh, this uh, Starliner also has a decent size uh, saddle. It's not quite as large as my original Starliner but it's plenty good enough. So there are the components and I'll give you an idea now of what I think the next step is going to be. I have to build a pier and I have to build legs. So I have to make a pier for the uh, Starliner mount with the one and three quarter inch axes. So what I did was I bought five foot of uh, this steel cylinder and the inside diameter is five and three quarter inches. So that the housing that holds the right ascension axis will fit in here. And the walls are 1 8 inch thick, so the outside diameter is 6 inches. In order to mount the legs on, I bought another steel cylinder. This one has an inside diameter of 6 inches. So it will fit onto the... I'm not going to try putting it on because I don't want to get it stuck. I don't know how easy it will be to get it on and get it off. I'll get to that point eventually. But the idea of having this cylinder is I can slip it onto the end of the bottom of the pier. And then I will take angle iron, before I slip it on, I will take angle iron and weld it three pieces at 120 degrees for the legs, for the pier. And uh, the uh, steel that I'll use for that is this uh, two inch by two inch angle iron, one quarter inch thick. 
Besides the pier and the legs, I also have to do something about counterweights. So I bought this steel cylinder. It has a uh, inside diameter of one and three quarter inches and an outside diameter of two and a quarter inches. The idea is I can cut this into various lengths to hold uh, counterweights that will then slip onto the uh, uh, declination axis. For the counterweights themselves, one of the things that I'm considering using are nice shiny rotors for a car. So that's the plan. Five foot cylinder for the pier, an adapter on the bottom of the pier to hold the legs, the two inch by two inch, one quarter inch thick anger iron, and then the additional tube, two and a quarter inch OD, one and three quarter inch inside diameter for making some sort of counterweight arrangement. What it's going to look like, I don't know. But as I go along, I'll show you what I wind up making. The next step is to put legs on the base that, is fit on the, that will fit on the side of the pier. This 12-inch cylinder has an inside diameter equal to the outside diameter of the pier, the 5-foot pier that will go inside it. I have these 2x2 uh, two two quarter inch thick angle irons laid out here now. And if you look carefully, maybe you can see the red lines that I've used to have them positioned roughly 120 degrees apart. So I'm going to weld the angle iron onto the cylinder and then I'll do some reinforcing on the welds and uh, I'll run some braces down from the top of this 12 inch cylinder down to the angle iron to strengthen it up more. the legs welded onto the 12 inch cylinder so we should test the welds so here is a sample weld we'll clean that up a bit so now we cut the brace pieces and I'm making each one 24 inches long So I have the uh, braces that I just cut welded to the top of the 12 inch cylinder and down to the near the end of the uh, legs and next thing that I will do will be to experiment with putting in the 5 foot pier that will go into here. I think in order to do that I'm going to cut a slice right down along the length of the cylinder so that I get a little expansion so I can put that five foot cylinder inside the 12 inch cylinder. So I got the legs finished on that uh, 12 inch uh, cylinder. I can now show you how the pier will actually fit inside there. And on the uh, on two of the legs I welded axles uh, for wheels to make it transportable on our property. My wife says I should wear this hat, but I like this one, so to keep everybody happy, every now and then you'll see me wearing both hats. So with the legs welded to the 12-inch uh, cylinder, I then uh, cut the 12-inch cylinder in three places so that the, the legs are removable. So the mount is somewhat, the arrangement for the mount will be somewhat uh, semi-portable. Since I didn't drill exactly the same holes for all three legs, holes on the pier, I needed to mark 
the location of each leg so I put the right leg in the right spot. So what I did was I started some drilling holes on the legs. I have one hole in one, two on another, and three on another. Here I'll show you a close up. So you can see here on the pier I started drilling holes, didn't go all the way through with them, and there were two here. There's three on the other side and one on the other side. And then the corresponding leg to fit in that spot has two drill holes on it. Again, they don't go all the way through. So I know that this leg would go in this position. And similarly with the other three legs, with the other two legs. The Starliner mount that I got from Arizona a couple weeks ago had only one setting circle on it and it's not any good. So since the Starliner mount is not a go-to mount and since I like using setting circles to find difficult objects, I decided to make my own setting circles. So the way I did that was I bought these 10 inch outside diameter discs, one half inch thick. And in order to make the setting circle, I have a computer program that I wrote to make a setting circle for the right ascension axis. And I made a pattern for a setting circle on the declination axis. Now in order for me to put this on the one and three quarter axes on the Starliner mount, I have to drill a one and three quarter inch hole centered as close as I can get to the center of this disc. In order to do that, what I do is I take the disc and put it down on a piece of paper like this. Then I take a pen and I trace out the disc. Next thing I do is I get a pair of scissors and I cut out that circle that I drew. Then I fold the piece of paper over one, one hemisphere against the other and then I fold it again. This is just a demonstration. I do it a little more carefully when I'm doing it for the disc. And then I take a pair of scissors and I snip off the tip of this. That puts a hole pretty well in the center of the sheet of paper. So then I take the sheet of paper, I lay it on top of the disc, get it centered as best I can, and then where that little hole is that I just snipped, I put a dot. And I use that dot to mark the center of the disc, and then I can drill a pilot hole in the center of the disc, and I can then drill my one and three quarter inch a hole so that the disc will fit on both the right ascension and the declination axis. So that is how I plan to build setting circles for this uh, mount that I got from Arizona. It's a, I know it's a dinosaur so we got the little dinosaur over there. It's a dinosaur type mount but it's very reliable and I really like it a lot so I'm going to make nice setting circles for it. So now with the uh, center of the disc Carefully marked out with that process, I am now ready to drill out a one and three quarter inch chunk of this aluminum. And after we're finished, there we are. One and three quarter inch hole to fit onto the right ascension and the declination axis. This is the setting circle that came with the mount. It's uh, totally useless, so I made my own setting circles. I used the uh, 10 inch aluminum discs that I bored the 1 and 3 quarter inch hole through. I put on the patterns that I made. This is an example for the declination axis. And I also uh, fastened in here these Teflon pads so that they'll rub against the portion of the uh, Starliner mount that comes up against it. Um, 
I have not decided on a way to do a pointer yet, but one of the things I am considering is somehow using a laser beam, a laser diode, to mark off the coordinates. So I'm considering to do something like this. I haven't finalized that plan yet. On the setting circle I have a screw and there will be a rod down below here and when you tighten the screw the rod will put pressure on the declination axis to, to lock the uh, setting circle with respect to the declination axis and a similar setup for the right ascension axis. The uh, mount came without any counterweights so I decided to use these brake rotors as counterweights and uh, the hole in the center here will accept that the heavy wool cylinder that I have that has a one and three quarter inch ID hole in it so that will slip on the uh, so here is that cylinder with a one and a qu one and three quarter inch ID opening and so that will slip onto the declination axis and I welded the cylinder to the rotor and then I can stack these rotors on top of one another to add as much weight as I want. Each one of these rotors weighs about nine pounds and when I was at the auto parts uh, store talking to my buddy Al uh, there was a question is well what do you need these old Saturn ones for and I said well these are Saturn rotors and I'm going to use them as counterweights on a telescope and so I should use Saturn rotors to keep astronomy in the picture. This old Starliner mount has a very interesting feature. It also allows you to operate in an altitude azimuth mode. So what I can do is rotate along the right ascension axis until the declination axis is more or less horizontal and I'll lock it in position. And so now here I have the altitude capability and now if I loosen this knob here at the top of the pedestal I have an azimuth capability. An altitude azimuth capability in a very nice equatorial mount. This is uh, my original Starliner. It's over 50 years old now. I really like these old Starliner mounts. This is the original one I owned. It has two inch axes on the declination and the right ascension. It's a little heftier than the one that I recently restored and rebuilt. This one has held many different scopes. I started out with an 8 inch reflector F7. Then I moved up to a 12 and a half inch reflector F8. I've had the uh, 6 inch refractor on it, a 10 inch Cassegrain, and also a uh, C14 and a few other scopes. Now it's holding my favorite scope, a 12 and a half inch true Cassegrain. It's a parallax instrument. And this mount has been uh, very, very reliable. I've never had a problem with the clock drive, no problem with the slow motion on the declination axis. And I like old things, I like working on old things, and you can see behind me, that's my 1970 Chevelle SS396. I've restored and reworked that, just like I did that other Starliner mount that we started out with earlier.